Okay, so this is the link that I want everyone to, to kind of see. And on Monday, I shared with you this exact link. It's from College Board. And essentially, it walks you through a checklist of the things that you need to have and the things that you need to do prior to Friday so that you're not panicked. And that is super important because there are certain things that you can and should do before Friday so that you're not running into major headaches on the day of. Let's start with when our test is. Um, our test is at this Friday, May 15th at 1 p.m. Okay, so knowing that and maybe writing that down uh, and making sure that you have an alarm set or whatever it might be so that you don't miss it uh, would be probably the first, the first part of the battle, uh, making sure that it's on the schedule, that you're good to go, and that you don't miss it. All right, so that's an important part. Um, in the, the days prior to Friday, uh, you are going to have to probably do some things to get yourselves ready. All right, the first thing is to walk yourself through a demo. So what College Board has created is they created a, kind of a, a demo where it allows you to practice not only the process of signing in, but also practice the process of um, like submission. And that's super important because there are specific ways that you need to access the test. And there's also specific ways to submit um, your response on, on the day of the exam. So let's just walk you through. I'm just gonna you're you're gonna do this on your own. I'm not going to um, I'm, I'm not gonna walk you through the whole process. But if you go to that link that I share with you in Skyward on Monday, you can see like this first step. Try the exam demo. Uh, if you review the ways to submit and you launch the interactive demo, I'm gonna launch the interactive demo just so you can see it. It shows you what it's gonna look like when you first try to sign into the exam. Now, here's what's gonna happen. A few days prior to the AP exam, which should be two days ahead, so this should, uh, tomorrow, you should be getting emailed to you from College Board an e-ticket. And that e-ticket is going to tell you what exam you're signed up for, when it is, and it's also going to give you a eight-character AP ID number. That ID number is essentially how you're going to be identified on the day of the AP exam. All right, so you need to know that number and you have to use it, and you got to make sure that you accurately use it um, in order to kind of submit your, your test. So I'm going to be looking tomorrow, especially if I'm all of you guys, for the AP test ticket that should be coming through your mailbox. Now, for some of you, um, maybe you're like a Mr. Irvin, I'm not getting the College Board uh, emails. The first thing I would do is I would check your junk mail and make sure that maybe some of that stuff isn't being sent to your junk mail. Uh, but whatever email you signed up or I guess signed up for the AP exam with and you have connected to your My AP account, that should be the one that's receiving these College Board um, emails. Uh, like, so make sure that you are getting that. If The other way to access the e-ticket is through the My AP portal, which is where you sign up for your tests. Um, and obviously you get a lot of inf like personal information about your exams from the My AP portal. All right, so when you go into uh, the day of the AP exam, you're going to have that e-ticket. You're going to actually launch the exam through that e-ticket, um, and it'll open up, obviously, hopefully in a, a browser or reliable computer, uh, and you're going to see a screen like this. And the screen is where you're going to enter into your eight-digit number, whatever it might be. Um, obviously, this is I'm just showing you this right now, and you're going to continue. Now, you're going to check in. Okay, you're going to check in 30 minutes before the exam. So for us, that means that you are accessing this exam at about like 1230. All right, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have to fill out your personal information. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I don't actually know his birthday, to be completely honest, but. whatever it might be, uh, apparently 1752 is, is invalid. So we'll go something a little bit more accurate. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna fill out my email address. I'm gonna be doing all of this, you'll notice as the timer um, like goes down, 
uh, that's when my exam is going to begin. All right, so on the day of the actual exam, um, you will, um, you'll have obviously however long it, you, you, you enter into this thing before the exam actually begins. But at 1 p.m. On, um, on Friday, like central time, our time, that is when this thing is gonna open up. Now, this is a really important question. Where are you testing from? And obviously all of us are gonna be testing from home. I'm gonna accept the terms and I'm gonna continue. Now, this is super, super important. You need to decide how you are going to be submitting your response. So we have one question on the day of uh, the AP exam and there are multiple ways to submit that question. You can attach a text file so like for example, what most of you are probably gonna do is you are going to type your response to the question, whatever you get, um, in a, a Google Doc, like, uh, and then you're gonna submit it through like a Google Doc or a Word document. And you're gonna just upload that. Others might be wanting to handwrite it. If you handwrite it, um, you are gonna handwrite it on a separate piece of paper, and there's different requirements for that. You, uh, you, you'll have to take a picture of it and then upload it, okay? So, like, I cannot stress enough um, that you kind of know how you're going to write or, like, create your response before Friday. Now, here is my guidelines for you guys. And those things are going to start in, like, nine seconds. It doesn't matter because I'm going to go back and out of this in a moment anyway. Um, here is my guidelines for you guys. Based off of what we're hearing for the, um, the AP test and for the, from the people that are taking it so far, um, it's way easier to submit this exam through, say, a text, like a, like a Google Doc, or even to cut and paste that Google Doc into uh, their program than it would be to like hand write it and then submit it through a picture. All right, that, it gets a little bit more complicated. And the sophomores who took the AP Gov test yesterday, the, the ones that had problems submitting tended to be the ones that were handwriting their response. So unless you are someone who cannot type at all, like you just have no ability to type and you're typing with two fingers, if you have any ability to type, it makes way more sense to do this thing in a Google Doc or in a, um, a Word document for a number of reasons. Number one, most students are faster typers than they are handwriting. You can edit it more easily. You've got access to editing software, which can review your work and fix, like, fix grammatical mistakes and do that relatively quickly, which makes it easier for the grader to read and makes you sound a little bit more professional. Um, in addition to that, it has auto save features. So if something happens, like you still can, um, you know, like let's say the, the doc closes or whatever, the auto save feature, especially in Google's, uh, Google Doc, means that it's, it's not, you're not gonna lose it. Right? You can just open it back up. So all these things make doc, uh, the typing of it in a, a separate document, in a different, a different tab, probably the best option for you for Friday. Okay, now we only have one question to worry about. And so that uh, makes ours <clears throat> a little easier. So on the day of the AP exam, it's gonna look like this. It says your exam begins, you're gonna have a timer on the bottom that looks like that. And then uh, you'll have your question that'll be right there. And you'll read through, uh, it's a five document DBQ, which you're create, you have to create a response to. Okay, you're gonna type it up in a separate piece of paper, or not, sorry, a separate document, or like I said, handwrite it, although I'm not necessarily uh, advising that. And then when you get to the, like it, it's to the end, um, you're gonna um, attach a response. Now here's the thing, you will have 50 minutes technically to, to do this, um, but five of those minutes are for the sole purpose of submitting it. So you have 45 minutes to write, and then after 45 minutes, uh, this, this timer that's right here at the bottom that's clicking down becomes red. And that is your warning that you are now within the submission period. Um, and when you get into that submission period, you need to then be attaching a response. So I can either attach a response like this, I can attach a, a text file or I can attach photos and then go through and um, like browse for files. Or I can, if I go back, oh, I can't go back. 
Here's how I attach photos, okay? Um, or if I chose to cut and paste, I can do it that way too. And then I would attach my photo or I would attach my, my text file or I would copy and paste my, um, my, my response into, uh, into this and then I would submit it. Once you submit, you cannot change anything. So make sure that everything is where you want it to be before you submit, otherwise there's nothing that you can do about it. If you submit it early, then you're gonna get a partial answer. If you, um, if you don't submit on time, you get no credit. All right, so let's say that I'm like really, really playing it tight. I'm like, oh, I got 30 seconds, and then I, I can't submit it in 30 seconds. Because, oh, oh my gosh, um, I'm going to browse for a file, and I can't find the file, and I realize I have to download the Google Doc into um, like a folder before I can upload it. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm panicked. If this time runner, timer runs down to zero, you get zero credit for the entire thing. So it is absolutely paramount that you are careful with your time and that once you hit that five minute warning and starts flashing red, that you're like wrapping up like what you need to do, like taking like just a minute to close up your ideas and like wrap it up and then submit. Give yourself more time to submit than you need to. Take advantage of the entire time. I don't want anyone here writing a 20 minute essay. You should write a full 45 minute essay. But um, make sure that you're aware of when you get to that five-minute warning, okay? So this is a general demo. Let me just walk you through your checklist of things that you need to review prior to the day of the AP exam. So this is the checklist from College Board. Uh, and then these are the things that you're going to need to know and need to have uh, before the AP exam uh, on Friday. So number one. Um, you have to have your eight character AP ID um, before the day of the AP exam. And that should be given to you either through an e-ticket, which is sent into your, your email, or your My AP uh, account. Okay, either way, just make sure you know that number, write it down. Okay, uh, make sure that you check your e-ticket to make sure that it is for the right test, that uh, it is for us for uh, AP US history, and that you're taking it at 1 p.m. on the 15th of May. That's when we're gonna be taking it. Make sure you are, you, you know, set a timer for that start date um, so you, that you're ready to go, and make sure that you check in on time. So all those things are happening ahead of time. Ahead of time, before, uh, when you're ready to take the test, um, you should also prepare a doc that you want to, um, to use. So when you're doing a doc, um, you're gonna have to use that, um, that eight digit uh, AP number or ID number um, on the day of the AP exam. So here is a, um, a Google doc that I created. I probably would even want to label it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, AP US history exam. So prior to the, the actual start of the exam, I'm gonna to wanna to open up the software that I'm gonna be using um, and typing the document, or at least create the, the document for it. Um, so uh, I'm, when I do that, I'm going to like put my ID number at the top of that document. I'm going to put my uh, initials, and then my response is gonna come after. I would highly recommend maybe labeling the document something similar to your ID number, as well as maybe the, the, uh, the name of the exam so that it's easy to identify um, when you download it and upload it. Um, it's gonna be uh, super important that you have this stuff prepared ahead of time. If you were handwriting it for some reason, you would write this ID number at the top of the sheet that you're using uh, along with your uh, initials, and then you would handwrite your response. And you would also, for a handwritten response, have a page number on the top right for every single page that you write because your, your response might be multiple pages. All right, so here's some things to maybe, maybe check out and double check prior to, to Friday. So make sure that you have that ID number, make sure that you have that e-ticket ahead of time, know your exam time, confirm that you, uh, you have the right ticket. Check your, um, your technology ahead of time. So make sure that you got a, a working internet connection, organize maybe with your parents and your siblings to make sure that like they know, hey, 
Today I'm taking an AP test. Um, I'm going to need the internet. Let's maybe not stream, um, you know, six different movies on Netflix while I'm going through because I need all the bandwidth for my for the internet so that it doesn't have any kind of major problems. Um, you also might want to find a quiet workspace. Um, where you can you know, set out all your materials, where you have uh, you know, a place to work in peace that you're not gonna be disrupted, like where that's gonna be for you, start scouting out a spot in your home to kind of work through this uh, right now. Um, the other thing, obviously, is make sure that you know which device you're gonna use. You can use multiple devices on the day of the AP test, uh, but you're gonna to wanna to use the one that's the most reliable. Uh, for you guys, because you're probably gonna be typing, um, for at least most of you, you probably want to access it on either a laptop or a, um, a desktop computer. Make sure that it's charged and that it's plugged in so that you don't have any kind of disruptions with power um, as you're going through and taking the test. When you go to open the um, uh, exam, you're going to open it with like specific browsers. So they recommend that you use Chrome, but you could also use uh, Firefox, Safari, or Edge as your browser when you're opening up the test, okay? So just be aware of that. Uh, make sure that you're using the appropriate browsers. Um, in addition to that, like I said, you've ar you already prepared the Google Doc or the Word Doc, but do something, that make sure that you look through the approved different files that you can upload. Um, doc files, uh, Word Doc files um, are, some of us are on the approved list. Um, beyond that, the other things that you're going to want to have in front of you for our test is you're going to want to have the resources printed out that we prepared in advance. Um, so you're going to want your, a printed out copy of every one of your period uh, review sheets, periods three, four, five, six, seven. You're going to want to have the um, graphic organizer that you can use to take notes on the documents that um, I've talked about and we've practiced in this class. You're going to want to use that contextualization cheat sheet that I shared with you guys. Um, and uh, you're also going to use, uh, I'm providing you with a timeline that you can use as well uh, that was part of the review that I did yesterday and that I'll be sharing with everyone through Canvas. So have those things out in front of you and make sure that you um, have them for quick reference. General rule of thumb. Yes, you can look up stuff in your book. Yes, you can look up stuff in Quizlet. Yes, you can technically search things on Google. My advice to all of you is don't. Um, don't do that unless you absolutely have to. And the reason you don't want to do it unless you absolutely have to is because it's going to take, number one, it's time consuming. And you do not have time to write a really, really good essay with lots of analysis for each of these documents if you're spending most of your time searching Quizlet terms or you're looking up what is the meaning of something, okay? So make sure you have the, your information on those, those period sheets uh, that, we, that you created for yourself. Make sure it's complete. Make sure it's good. And make sure it's in your own words because that's the other reason why you don't want to do Google searches. They're going to have plagiarism software, and if you're copying and pasting anything off the internet, that's going to be red flagged, and you're going to uh, like have your test uh, maybe potentially forfeited, and you yourself could uh, see some sort of academic integrity violation, not only just within Sandberg, but also that could affect your, your application process for colleges. So do not mess with that, okay? Um, like you, it takes too long to cite sources, and so just... As we're getting closer to Friday, you got to be studying. You got to be studying your content. You should be doing those reviews. You should be going back and looking at some of the YouTube videos that I've been posted or that other people have been posting to make sure you know this history so that you're not accessing this stuff on the day of the AP exam because um, that's going to be a liability for a lot of people. Um, the other thing is you absolutely, and this is super important, you absolutely can have zero communication with other people during the exam itself. So that means obviously no social media, no direct messaging, um, like no phone calls with other people. You can't even use a document that is shared and linked with other people and can be edited during the test. So that's why like you couldn't even like have a shared document out. Um, if it's editable by more than like one person, that's technically a violation. So do not put yourself in a bad position. You, like I said, you, you, you want to kind of protect yourself and protect your integrity for your test. So that's why we want to have those, the stuff that we've been preparing for the last few weeks printed out, ready to go, and in front of us on the day of the exam. Okay? 
Um, so that's just kind of important. Now I'm anticipating they're going to be doing a number of different things to obviously protect and curb cheating. Uh, obviously plagiarism software is going to absolutely be part of this. I don't know what else they're going to do, but I'm anticipating that there are multiple versions of the exam that we're going to be taking. So within this classroom, expect that all of you might be getting a different AP question on the day of the AP exam. So like some people could be getting a question from period seven. Some people could be getting a question from period three. There could be different skills that um, different students are answering. I know some people are getting comparison question. Some people might be getting a cause and effect. Another could be getting continuity change over time. I don't know how many variations, but I'm guessing that there will be variations of this exam. So um, that's why it is important as we get closer to Friday that you do your preparation for all the different types of content that's gonna be potentially on there, periods three through seven. And I would urge you to take those practice tests that I posted because every one of those practice tests for test two, version A, B, and C, each is a different skill. And you don't know what skill you're gonna get on the day of the AP exam. Okay, let's take a look at during the exam. So here's some important things that you need to know. Um, once the exam is started, do not refresh your browser. Uh, that could uh, you know, cause a problem and it could disrupt the timer or could kick you out. Okay, do not, so don't do that. Don't press the back arrow. Um, so once you start the exam, keep that screen open. You can open a new tab, but that screen stays open. Okay, um, you uh, make, keep an eye on that timer. What I would highly recommend in addition to those, uh, those sheets that we've been obviously preparing, I would also highly recommend that you have a timer for yourself so you can kind of pace yourself and figure out, okay, I need about six to eight minutes for my documents. I need maybe 37, 38 minutes to writing. Follow the guidelines that I've been going over over the uh, last six weeks. Um, you are going to uh, obviously make sure that you submit before the timer runs out. Otherwise, that response will be given a zero. If for some reason your internet disconnects and you get booted from the exam, um, you can re-access it through your e-ticket. So please make sure you note that. So just like, oh, if you got like, somehow there's a mistake, don't panic. Just get in and use your, access your e-ticket as quickly as possible and the exam should pick up where, uh, not where you left off, the timer's still ticking, um, but it'll, it'll um, it, you know, you'll pick up hopefully with a minimal loss of time. If you do get disconnected for a long period of time, there's a form here that you have to complete um, if you wanna request a makeup, okay? So that's just something to be aware of. Now, after the exam is over, you can choose if you want to submit um, a, like your scores. I would highly recommend probably not doing that. Uh, wait till you get your scores back and then you can choose to submit after the fact. And then as always, you should report cheating from other people. Because remember, this is a norm test. So if you're aware of other people cheating, that hurts you uh, because it means that the average score to pass is going up artificially. All right, so we wanna make sure that this test is, uh, the integrity of it is, is, uh, is kept intact. Uh, so just worry about yourself, but, but try to like make sure that there's no cheating that's going on. Do not engage in any kind of social media regarding the test, both during the test and especially after. Okay, there will be po people that are posting stuff on Twitter, so I do not engage in that whatsoever. That, could that would be a violation. You're not supposed to talk about the exam, um, and so be aware of that. Okay, uh, I'll be obviously doing as many reviews as I can in order to try to prepare you guys for this in the coming days. Um, but uh, this is the, the test in a nutshell. 